We will now talk about really fading channels, which is a statistical model for non-line of sight communication channels. So this means that when we have a transmitter and a receiver, they can't see each other. So the line of sight path is blocked. However, there's various objects in the propagation environment that can scatter the signal going from transmitter towards the receiver. So in this figure here, you see that even if the transmitter and receiver can't see each other, they can all see the same scattering elements and therefore there are all these colored paths. All of them having slightly different propagation distances to the receiver. And even if you have many paths, usually you have a worse channel gain because all this scattering is taking the signal that reaches a rough surface and scatter it in many directions and thereby you are losing a lot of the power. But the important thing is that you at least is getting some received power at the receiver side. Let's look at the channel response between the transmitter and receiver. There are L paths, so we get the sum over these paths. And each of the paths can be described roughly as the line of sight case that we considered in the previous video. So we have a channel gain, alpha i, and we have square root of that one. Alpha is not computed as in the line of sight case, but it's still described the channel gain of the ith propagation path. And then we have a phase shift, e to the power of minus 2 pi, we have the propagation distance di minus some kind of reference distance, and then we divide by the wavelength lambda. When L is large, it makes good sense to use statistical model of the channel. So if you gather all of the channel gains, alpha i's, and draw a histogram of them, it looks like a random distribution. And the phase shifts will typically be distributed between 0 and 2 pi in an even way because the propagation distance is so much larger than the wavelength. So we are summing up a lot of different paths and all of them, you can view them as independent and identically distributed from some kind of distribution. And then the central limit theorem says that when you add up a lot of random variables that are independent, then you get something that is roughly Gaussian distributed. And G is now complex Gaussian because that you have the phase shifts and it has zero mean and has a variant that we will call beta to be consistent with previous videos. And this model is called Rayleigh fading. Well, there is a Gaussian distribution, but the thing is that the absolute value of G has a Rayleigh distribution. And also the absolute value square have an exponential distribution. But it's the Rayleigh distribution to have given it a name. The word fading is signifying that we have large variations in the quality of this channel. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And to illustrate that, here is the probability density function of absolute value of G. And uh, we have a horizontal axis with logarithmic scale. And most of the probability mass is around 10 to the power of zero here, which is equal to one. And that is when we have a good channel. It's close to its mean value. But with 19% of the cases, we have something that is below 10 to the power of minus one. And 2% of the cases, we have something below 10 to the power of minus two. So sometimes we have a bad channel and then we say that we are in deep fate. And that is something that we need to deal with whenever we have a Rayleigh fading channels. Sometimes it's bad. We can generalize this to a SIMO case when we have a uniform linear array. Delta is the antenna spacing. And say now that we have scattering objects all around, so signals are coming in uniformly distributed from different angles. And then if we study each element in the array individually, then by the same argument as before, we will get a Rayleigh fading and they will have identical distribution because they're in the same propagation environment. However, will their random distributions be independent or not? Well, one can show that it's only happening when the antenna spacing is lambda over two or an integer time stat. So that's why half wavelength antenna spacing is very important in wireless communications. This is like the sampling theorem in space. So just as the time signal doesn't have to be sampled more than twice per period, it's enough to put up two antennas per wavelength when we are sampling something here with the antennas. So if we are using a uniform linear array with half wavelength antenna spacing, we get what is called independent and identically distributed or IID Rayleigh fading. So G has a complex Gaussian distribution, the mean value is zero, and the variance is beta for each of the elements and they are independent of each other. And if we have uniform linear arrays at both the transmitter and the receiver and this type of rich scattering around them, well then G will have elements that are independent and identically distributed in the same way.
and when we do something like that, the channel matrix will have the maximum rank of minimum of the number of transmitter and receive antennas with very high probability. So in those cases, we can actually make use of this multiplexing gain a lot. When you have a random channel distribution, the question is how often do you get new realizations? And in two next videos, we will look at two main categories of that. Slow fading, where you have one random realization throughout your entire transmission, and fast fading, where you get new random realizations all the time during your transmissions. And the capacity can be analyzed in different ways in these two canonical cases.